Last time, we looked at how we would spawn objects within this level using the script. We looked at how we would move them using a start position and end position. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at how saving works in this game. One thing to note about saving is that it's highly variable based off of what you want to do with your game. There are many different systems and you'll need to customize your own system based off of what you need. In this instance, all we need to save is a best time right here and a best time that shows up once the game ends. So we're going to only save one string to a file. Let's get into that. So if we open up this saved script.gd right here, this class is going to have all the functions in order to save our class. So we can see we have a best save time function, save best time function, we have a write to file, we have a load time, and we have a load best time function and a get elapsed time. These are the only functions we need. Let's go over them one by one. So first we have the save best time function. We are playing the game, the game ends, and now we need to get our current time and we need to compare it to our previous best time. And if it's bigger, then we write it to the file. In order to do this, we pass in the current time for the game. Then we make it a float of the load best time, which is another function we'll get to later. That's our best time. And we compare if our current time is greater than our best time. If it is greater, then we're going to call the write to file function, which is this function right here. And this is where the interesting stuff comes in about saving. We have this write to file function with our best time we want to save. We need to create a new file. This is just, a, think of it sort of like a node or something over here. You just use the dot new to get it up. And this is really interesting right here. So you notice this user dot dot slash slash. This is very important when you're saving. When we go up here, we'll notice um, we'll notice we have res dot dot slash slash or colon. Um, the reason why we don't want to save it in the res file is sometimes while the game is executing, there might be errors in saving to the res file. The user file was specifically created in order to make saving always work correctly. This is in the user data file of your computer. It varies based off of which system you're using. Um, so you'll need to look into what system you have and how it would work in yours. Now in the user file, we're going to create a new file with the name savebesttime.save, and we're going to open up with file write. So you have file write here, you can see, and file read right here. These are the two commands we're going to use. And I shall say we're not creating a file, my bad. We're opening that file if it exists. Once that's happened, we're going to store the line, or in other words, we're going to write string best time. So we're taking the time we have as a integer, we're transforming it into a string, and then we're just printing it out in savegame.store. And that's it, and then we're going to close the file. So that's how you would write something. Take in what you want to write, open a file in order to write it, then actually open open the file with the um, path to it, what you want to do to it, in this case, write, then you write to it with store line or whichever method you want, and then you crash. Now we're going to move on to loading functions themselves. Uh, you'll notice this load time function is actually used up here. This is going to get our current best time that we have stored in the file. In order to do that, we just get a file object. Then we check to see if this file exists. And if it doesn't exist, you can handle it in different ways. For example, you could make a new file there. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to print no file. Uh, the reason for it returning zero is when you return something, this variable will be like a, oh, something went wrong, error check it message. Um, so that's just for returning errors back to the original function. Then we get save game dot open, which is now we know this file opens, we're going to open it, and we're going to use this to read from it. We're going to get the current line, which is the line at the top in this case, and then we're going to close out the file and return that current line. For this setup where we just need to save one line, this is totally acceptable. However, if you have a file with multiple lines, you'll need an iterator if you use this method. Now we've got a way to get back our load time. And this is actually the way we're going to go about 
getting it for our timer on the level itself. Next, we're going to, this is the actual function we're going to call in order to do that. The reason why is because this right here is going to return back a, a pure integer. In other words, it's going to be something like 10,477, where each second is tallied up as one. The reason why is because time we know is in minutes with 60 seconds instead of every 100 seconds. So we need to change it to an elapsed time, or in other words, we just need to format it. So we'd call this from outside, then we would return our load time as specified by this, which is going to be like 15,783. And then we're going to format that into minutes, seconds, milliseconds. And we're going to do it using this function right here. Whoops, sorry. Uh, we have a default value just in case, but we don't need the default value uh, in this case because we're passing in load time. So it's going to just determine we're going to have two spaces for minutes, two spaces for seconds, and three spaces for milliseconds with a precision of three. All of this just formatting. You can copy it if you want, but you're probably you're going to have your own way of formatting your own string. Uh, we're splitting it by the period, which is fine, because the way this is going to work is that the first two digits that it returns is going to be like 12 point. 3,745 thousands, um, instead of how I was saying for 15,783, there'd be a period in between the first two numbers, and that's going to get us what place we're in. So this is all formatting. Um, you don't really need to know this. It's all formatting. So we're going to save this quickly, just so I don't say, I mean, don't crash again, just in case. So now we're going to go back to our actual level. It's going to be here against the clock.tscn. And we're going to see how we use those functions we just learned about. Go down here. We'll notice we're going to load this .gd. One of the things we want to notice right here is that this is a .gd, right? It's a script. If we go up here, this is a TSC, tscn, and we need to use preload and instance. There's a very good distinction here. We're creating an instance of this object here. Whereas here, we're loading the script. We don't need to use instance, we don't need to use new, because we're simply using a script that already exists, and we're just using static functions from it. So we now have a way to access that script, and then we're going to call dot save best time, string dot get node, stopwatch dot lapse time. So this is the way I currently get time in my, um, in my program. I use this node right here. Uh, you're going to do it differently in your project, especially if you're saving something else. So just put in whatever you're, you want to save right here. And then we're going to show, which in other words just means we're going to show the game over thing, which has nothing to do with what we're doing right now. And then we're going to get this current text, which is, we go back up here, we're going to get this current time, right? Play game. I'm going to just pop it up here. We're going to get this time and put it in there. And you'll notice, though, we can't get this time and put it in there. And that's what we're going to look at right now. Uh, you'll notice we get the best time, but instead of just getting the node of the best time that we already had, we need to save.load best time. In other words, this. Sorry, let me find it quickly. This right here is going to do the comparison. It's going to check out if our current time is better than our best time. And whatever it returns or whatever it writes, this fo function is going to read it. So now we have learned how to get a best time. We've learned how to write the best time to a file. We've learned how to read the best time from the file. And we've glanced over formatting, but uh, it wasn't really important to this lesson. So I hope this has helped you in learning how to use files. Especially, one of the things you need to remember is make sure you put the file, if you're saving it, in the user file. It's much better to write there than in the res file or resources file, just because errors can occur when writing to this file in game time.